This is Weird Al Yankovic, and I'm here with Dave and Ethan. Together, we are Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Episode 128-inch. On this week's episode, Dave and Ethan interview me! It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch you don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Strike up the music, the band is begun. It's Dave and Ethan's polka. Turn on the podcast and join in the fun. It's Dave and Ethan's polka. There's content and info that we're now so fun. They want to entertain you. Don't be shy and join the menu. It's Dave and Ethan's polka menu. Oh, hey, Ethan. Hey, Dave. So, uh, let's talk about last week. Yeah, apparently we had uh, quite the episode of Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. Oh, did we? I haven't listened yet. Wait, really? Yeah, I was too busy trying to finish this crossword puzzle. I am so stuck on this one clue. What is a seven-letter word for the movement of a solvent across a semi-permeable membrane? Hmm, does it start with an O? Yeah, it does. Ah, you know what? Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, a lot of Weird Al fans really enjoyed hearing us interview Weird Al. You know, in that clip we played last week from episode 2000 Inch. Yeah, and not surprising, it was one of our most listened to and one of our most talked about episodes to date. Well, Dave, maybe we should just interview Weird Al every week. What do you say? I say that is a really good idea, but we already have a lot of great guests lined up for future episodes, and we really need to stick to our schedule. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Well, it was great to hear all the positive feedback about our interview with Weird Al, and we have more coming up with Weird Al very soon, later this episode, and for the rest of the month. But first... From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast, we want to thank you for all the love, the posts, stories, messages, comments, shares, and retweets from all all of our many friends, family, new listeners, and especially original listeners who have supported us from the very beginning. Yes, that's right. Now, one of our original listeners, uh, at Al Yankovic on Twitter, now they not only liked our tweet about episode 127 inch, they retweeted it to their nearly 5 million Twitter followers. How awesome. That is pretty sticky majestic. Plus, get this, we got a call from the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission letting us know that our podcast was charting in Canada as the number 30 comedy interview podcast. Wow! Good thing we specifically keep in complete compliance with all Canadian broadcast standards, you know, despite the fact that we're a podcast and we aren't in Canada. Well, I think that's partly the reason, but I mostly think it's because the Canadian population has really been enjoying your Canadian idiot and Mackenzie Brothers cooing. Now that's what keeps them coming back, eh? Oh, hey! Well, let's see if we can get us up to number 27. Coo! <laughs> Now, our intern Frank also said that the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission commissioner told him that we are charting in Israel as well. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast, shalom to all of our Israelish listeners out there. Our interview with Weird Al also made quite an impression on our friend Dice Equilibrium, who you might remember popped in recently on episode 126 inch. She has already released two mashup videos featuring our interview with Weird Al on her Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Now, the first video Dice did was all about Weird Al talking about the ill-fated Christmas album, and the second one was all about his song, You're Pitiful. You can check those out now on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at Dice Equilibrium. D-Y-S-E-Q-U-I-L-I-B-R-I-U-M. 
I am so excited. I cannot wait to see what she comes up with next. Well, me too. But let's pick up where we left off last week with this preview of our interview with Weird Al himself from episode 2000 Inch, tentatively airing on Wednesday, August 29th, 2057. Already in progress. The one thing that we had just been talking about recently on the podcast is with the new Apple Music update, we can hear a, a different version of Canadian Idiot with the uh, parts. <laughs> what was the story on that? Yeah, I, I, I heard about that, and I, I'm I'm, surp- I'm surprised because that was never cleared, and they are certainly breaking some kind of copyright by making that available. So I, I hope they don't get sued for that. Uh, the, 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 re- the reason that, that that was never in any official release is because, I mean, that's a, you know, that is a song, quote unquote, uh, right. you know, written by Bob and Doug McKenzie and Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis. And they did not approve the use of that sample. So, um, you know, I, I sneak it into live shows <laughs> just because it's fun and I can, uh, but it's never been on any record. And I'm surprised that this, that this version is kind of making it out into into the world. I, I bet that whoever greenlit that wasn't aware that they <laughs> weren't supposed to do that. Are there other versions of songs that have like different samples or things like that, sound effects? Uh, hmm. I'm I'm not at the top of my head. Are you, have you heard rumors? No, just well. I, I guess um, <laughs> you know one that's I guess a little similar is the alternative polka off of Bad Hair Day. The Weezer part you released like on Twitter or something. A small clip. Right. Are, are there other things like that that maybe you recorded and, and mastered something and ended up taking it out? No, that I think I think that might be the only case where we actually recorded something. And then, you know, we, we literally had to slice it out. Uh, and then somebody from Weezer's office said, oh, just just use Pro Tools and, and like take it out. And like, <laughs> I think at that point, we, we, were, we weren't even using Pro Tools. That was like so brand new. So we, had, we actually got the razor blade out and like, we're just cutting it literally out of the master tape. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thankfully it sounded okay. I mean, you can't, you don't really notice the edit, I don't think. Uh, it, it just wasn't, you know, the edit that we were hoping to make. Right, right. Yeah. While we're on Bad Hair Day, I want to talk about something that Bermuda revealed on our podcast uh, earlier this year. And that was that during phony calls, the phone number that is dialed in the song is actually, at the time, Jim Kimo West's personal phone number. That is correct. Yes. I'd love to hear the story behind that. I just thought because we needed to use a phone number and I thought it would be kind of a practical joke. Like to make that like an actual phone number. And I was curious to see if Jim was going to get any calls based on that, some, some intrepid fan, like figuring out those numbers and calling it to see who it was. And I don't think anybody ever did. And by the time it, we, we made it common knowledge, I think Jim had changed his phone number. But at, at the time, we just thought that was funny. <laughs> So great. <laughs> By the way, I, I wish I wish I could go through every one of your episodes and and because because I want to li- when I listen. Uh, well, first of all, I, let me say like I, I'm a bit, big fan of your podcast. I mean, it's it, I don't want to like blow smoke, but I, it's easily one of my top five favorite Weird Al podcasts. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm really I'm really impressed with this show, and and the guests that you get are, are amazing. Uh, it, it's sort of like like a eulogy. Like I, every week when I listen, I feel like I'm oh, no. dead, and these people are like, like I remember Al. Oh, do I have stories about Al? <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. And then, then whenever somebody makes a mistake or gets a story wrong, I, I, I feel like like writing a letter to the editor. That's not how it happened at all. <laughs> they completely, they completely got that wrong. Oh, Al, please do write to us and tell us. That would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm curious. I mean, you know, there might be a few times, possibly, where maybe Ethan or myself might have gotten something wrong. And no thanks to our no good intern, it was not edited out. But are there any, you know, really big glaring, you know, things that we got wrong or somebody got wrong that you want to clarify? And I guess let's to keep this list to a manageable size. Let's try to limit it to, let's say, the first 126 episodes. Okay. Well, first of all, my name is an Al. I don't know why people keep calling me that. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Now, I, I, I should have I should have kept a list. I should I should have like made a list every time somebody said something wrong. I'm just gonna keep this in my little document here. <laughs> uh, but but I, I did not do that. It, I mean, nothing egregious. I mean, you know, every now and then somebody will just like get a, a fact wrong, and 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 I let it go because uh, usually they're saying <laughs> nice things about me anyway. <laughs> I mean, think hard because now is your chance to clarify anything. Because if I, you do not, I'll never get another wanna, chance. You know, I know. Put any corrections out there. You, you know, it becomes fact. It becomes you know weird out <laughs> fact. You know, if, if you don't want to dispute anything, it becomes part of the lore. Right. Um, yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to go through all, all 126 shows. So let me just uh, say that if you say something wrong in this interview, I will correct you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, now that you've certified the first 126 episodes, let me ask you about when we interviewed your buddy, Joel Miller, and he revealed two different times where he has heard you swear. And uh, I would like to, to get your official response to that. Um, if it is accurate what he said, or if if he is just making stuff up, I I, I am I would never call Joel Miller a liar. I, I think he believes I did this. <laughs> <laughs> I I have no recollection of this whatsoever. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I mean, um, I think at the time when we were talking to him, that that was right when the New York Times article uh, that um, Sam Anderson had written, and Sam had interviewed. Suzanne, your wife, and she said she's never heard you swear. Have you ever sworn in your entire life? It, you know, as a kid, did you experiment with a swear in your closet? Or no, I, I don't believe so. And I, I think in Joel's case, I mean, again, I honestly don't remember this. It, it might have been like the fudge sickle thing where I started to say something bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then I caught myself. <laughs> I, again, I, I really honestly don't remember. <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, we, uh, I wish, I wish I could not swear. Al, will you do us the pleasure of swearing on the podcast? We'll bleep it, but just for Dave and I. No, you won't. <laughs> no. What's the, what is the worst word you will say? Uh, <laughs> I hate that word. Oh man. That is a terrible word. We will now bleep that anytime it's said. You can bleep that if you want to. I will. I, I will have Frank do that. <laughs> All right, again, jumping around a little bit, I want to ask you a little bit about a television show that you were on way back in 1993 that had a lasting impression on, on me, the performance on that show. And I remember watching it as it aired, and this show is Circus of the Stars, where you're bouncing on a sway pole 55 feet in the air. So first off, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously I was, I was not at a good point in my life. Uh, I, I probably thought, well, you know, if I die, no big. <laughs> I, I actually, you know, th these thoughts ran through my mind uh, when I was up on that sway pole uh, that like, you know, if I fell off and died, at least they'd have some good footage. They could run it on the news. <laughs> you know, that's something. It's c kind of a win-win, you know? Um, now, I, I don't know. I mean, um, after I did it, uh, I, I don't know why Jay let me do it in the first place, but after I did it, Jay said, you are never doing anything remotely like that again. <laughs> and many other, many other loved ones in my life said the exact same thing. <laughs> How did that come about? How did that whole thing come about? How did you... I, I guess, get involved with Circus of the Stars and get convinced to stand on a sway pole 55 feet in the air. Uh, I, I called them every day saying, please, can I be on a sway pole? <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know. We, I, we got an odd call from them out of the blue, I'm sure. It's like, what, we want, I want Al to be on Circus of the Stars and we want to do, do the sway pole thing. And, and uh, I really don't know what my state of mind was at the time where I thought that was a good idea. I mean, that's not, you know, at this <laughs> point in my life, I, I've reached a point in my life and my career or I can say no to things. Like, no, I think that's a bad idea. No, I might kill myself. I don't like that. But I guess in 1992, 93, I was thinking, ah, I might sell some albums if I die. You know? <laughs> My estate will make a lot of money. <laughs> And I'm just curious, how long did you practice that? And how did you practice being on a sway pole? I, I didn't want to practice because then it wouldn't feel real, you know? 
Um, no, I, I don't remember. I, I did practice. I practiced with a with a circus trainer, and uh, and we practiced. I practiced. Uh, I forget how long, but but a number of times, uh, obviously before we did the show. In fact, the sway pole <laughs> was set up uh, at Universal Studios right next to the Psycho House. The the tour bus you know comes by, the the tram, and yeah. uh, I remember one time when when I was uh, uh, practicing at the sway pole just as a gag, uh, I I took my accordion into the Psycho House. And when the tour bus came by the Psycho House, and this is the famous Psycho House, I walked out of the front door of the Psycho House playing the accordion. <laughs> and people were like, oh, and there's Weird Al playing his accordion in the Psycho House. <laughs> and, and the other thing I'll tell you about the Sway Pole experience was uh, they did a dress rehearsal uh, you know, immediately before the taping, and I slipped. And uh, I scraped up my arm really badly oh. on, on the on the pole because they have like the, the steps on the pole, you know. And I, I I I I injured myself. I mean, my bloody arm and everything. And instead of being like, "Oh, Al, we're so sorry," they're like, "Now look what you've done. We're gonna have to put bandages <laughs> on your arm. It's not gonna. <laughs> it's gonna look terrible. We, we had you in a short sleeve shirt and like like. Oh, but okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry to." Sorry to ruin your sway pole thing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I, I was there, like, you know, kind of in pain on the sway pole, you know, just really, really hoping I wasn't going to fall off. Because that, <laughs> you know, honestly, even though that there were some plus sides to that, in the, in the big picture, that wouldn't have been a good thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to ask, because I think I know your answer to this, but were you scared to be up there on that sway pole? Well, what do you think, Dave? <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I mean, I get terrified watching the footage, you know, yeah. on, on the VHS tape. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Imagine what it was like to be there. Oh, so it was. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know why I did that. And I'm I'm glad that I never have to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, would you say that that is the weirdest thing that you have ever done? Aside from this interview, oh gosh, um, <laughs> it's uh, the most dangerous, probably. Yeah, uh, weirdest. That's a that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta ask, what what was the origin of of uh, appearing on the Winnin's Real Meaning of Christmas? That's a, a pretty obscure one. Yeah. I, again, uh, I guess I, I just always wanted to work with R. Kelly because I figured that's never going to come back and haunt me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where, where I, I wasn't busy at the time. I got the phone call. I thought, oh, it will be fun to, you know, be a band of wine Christmas special. And why not? And in fact, the uh, the coat that I wore in uh, that show, uh, they gave that to me. And I thought, oh, that's a nice coat. And do you know where else that coat is used? I'll tell you, that's the coat that I wear in the tacky video and on the, every single tour where I play tacky. Wow. Uh, wow. How cool. Wow. That's a great bit of trivia. That, that was the coat that they, that was the, the crazy white guy coat that they made for me <laughs> for, that, for that special. Oh, I love it. <laughs> While we're on some TV appearances, I want to ask about... Um, you know, we, we got to see a leaked episode of Star Wars Detours. How did you see that? Did somebody put that on their Twitter feed? <laughs> By any chance? Someone, someone, yeah, I don't know how. You know, I don't know if we'll ever get to see the show. I loved that episode. I mean, I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm a Weird Al fan, obviously. You know, was that the only episode you're in? Or is there more Weird Al goodness out there that we should be demanding to see? There were other shows. I think that might have been the one where I was featured the most. Uh, so if, if one episode had a leak, I'm glad it was that one because I was sort of like uh, Andy Andy Richter and I were featured, but yeah. we, but we did appear in a, a small handful, and uh, and actually when uh, well, th this is going to be real obscure. Uh, it, this was uh, when we found out that the show was never going to make it to air and that it had been canceled. Um, we were in the middle of doing a musical episode. I was I was writing a musical oh, no. episode of Detours. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> and we got we got as far as recording the vocals. Like all the cast members came in and recorded their vocals. Wow! Uh, and and it just and, and then we found out the plug was pulled. 
Uh, so it did go further than that. But but I mean, this was uh, this was the, the weird thing with Star Wars Detours is like George Lucas was funding it, you know, with his play money, just like here, make a TV show. The entire first season was in the can. I think we were well into working on the second season when we found out like, oh, this is never going to air anywhere. This is going to go in a big, dark, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark warehouse. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's ever going to see it. And who, it might see the light of day. Some, I don't know. I don't know. But it, just, it was just crazy to me that this, like, fully produced TV show, which I happen to think was pretty darn good, yeah. uh, it's just, it just fell into the abyss. I mean, at the time, Disney, I think, said, uh, when, when Disney uh, bought Lucasfilm, they said, we don't want to confuse people. We're putting out all these, like, you know, episode seven, eight, and nine, and we don't want to get in the way of that. And, you know, at this point, it's sort of like, well, how about now, guys? And they still don't seem <laughs> to think that it's worthy <laughs> of release somehow. I don't, I don't know why, honestly. They're putting out all sorts of weird Star Wars stuff that's that has nothing to do with the continuity. They're, you know, uh, it makes no sense. And, and I, I haven't seen it, but apparently there's a show called is it Star Trek. It's called Below Decks. It's sort of like the Star Trek version of what Detours was, from what I understand. I could be wrong about that. Right. But it's, it's very similar conceptually. I don't know. I just, I, I don't know why, you know, in, in a world that's hungry for content, you know, why that, why, why that couldn't find a home somewhere. Right. But who knows? Well, so what can you tell us about the musical? So it's, did you record the music or is it? Uh, uh, it I, I worked on it. I co-wrote it with Dan Milano, who was one of the guys uh, on Star Wars Detours. He also did Greg the Bunny. He does a lot of stuff with Robot Chicken. So the two of us together basically wrote this musical episode of Detours. And again, not only did it not get, I mean, we just got as far as just recording the vocals uh and you know it, it, it's very much a work in progress like mm -hmm. you, you will never find you know even a scratch recording of it somewhere it was just it was abandoned very early on but we got as far as like writing the songs i mean oh there, there's some demos for you demos which you'll never hear probably but i, I did do demos <laughs> of, of those songs again i gosh i wouldn't even be able to tell you where those are but but uh i did those at some point so that that, that didn't get made <laughs> i want to hear them <laughs> I mean, obviously, I know, I know. Your fans love the, the, you know, the the Star Wars songs. They're they're a, you know a very important moment in every live show. It would be so cool to hear more Weird Al Star Wars related music. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, um, I I don't know. You know, I I think that that episode is probably lost lost to the sands of time. But uh, you know. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, I, I'm, I don't think I'll do any actual more Star Wars songs like, you know, like Saga Begins or Yoda, just because I don't want my live shows to become like the Star Wars show. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm, but I'm always, I'm always happy to do Star Wars related stuff. I'm obviously a big fan, and and if anytime they want me for for anything, I'm more than happy to join in. All right, I'm gonna get a little personal here with this this uh, TV show I'm going to ask you about. And back in 2003, I was on a VH1 special called Set in Skin about my tattoos. And as part of that special, they flew me out to LA and you surprised me with your very own Dave Elvis Rossi tattoo. <laughs> and it was a very detailed tattoo. And I'm just curious uh, on the process <laughs> and how long it took f for that tattoo <laughs> to happen. Well, well, first I got a real tattoo, and then I thought, oh no, that's gonna freak Dave out. So I had the tattoo removed, mm. and then I put it back on <laughs> with with the sharpie, <laughs> just so you wouldn't freak out. Uh, and the whole process took months. It was a lot. The, the thing I remember from that show mostly was your your non reaction. I thought, oh, Dave is Dave is gonna freak out when he sees my Dave tattoo, and I show it to you, and you're like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> What was going on, Dave? <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You got a test. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> I must have been freaking out on the inside. I'm it just sure didn't you were captured sure on were. camera. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any tattoos of your own besides that really cool Dave Elvis Rossi tattoo? Um, all my tattoos are internal. So whenever I, my doctor does exploratory <laughs> surgery, I say, "Go, feel free to tattoo anything you want while you're in there. Don't even tell me. Surprise me. I don't even want to know what it is. 
Just, you know, tattoo my spleen. What a, you know, have a blast. Have, have fun. Have fun. Be imaginative. And then just like, you know, stitch me up and maybe I'll see it someday. Maybe I won't. Who knows? But I'll just know it's there. <laughs> All right. Well, if you were to get a visible tattoo that others could see just besides your doctor's, what would you get? Uh, I would get a, a Dave Elvis Rossi tattoo of your face in in real size over my own face. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer too. <laughs> Al was was Dave the first person to get your face tattooed on him, or were there others that came before? Uh, I, I'm sorry to tell you, Dave, but the first one I was aware of was Carl the Arm Dittmar, and this was. Pretty early on, uh, probably early '80s, and and he uh, had a likeness of me tattooed on his arm, and it was the first time I'd ever seen a Weird Al tattoo, and I was kind of freaked out by it. And I was like, <laughs> "Wow, this guy! It, this is permanently going to be on his arm for the rest of his life, probably. That's crazy. Who would do that?" And then then you came <laughs> along, Dave, <laughs> and you showed him up, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Are you aware of any other Bermuda Jim or Steve tattoos out there? <laughs> Hmm. Oh, gosh. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think so. Dave, Dave might be unique there. I'm not I'm not sure. I, I, I can't <laughs> point to any other band tattoos off the top of my head. Are you offended that uh, Dave has not gotten a Ruben tattoo yet? I, I think Ruben specifically requested that he not do that. <laughs> so I, it, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me in the, the least what he decides to do re Ruben, <laughs> but, but I think that would that would freak Ruben out too much. Now, how often do you get to see people with Weird Al tattoos? Is it like every concert you're seeing another Weird Al tattoo, or is it is more frequently than just once every couple of years? I assume at this point. Yeah, and and I see a lot online. In fact, uh, just today, I think I, I liked somebody's UHF tattoo. They got a big UHF logo tattooed on their shoulder. I thought, oh, well, that's cool, you know. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I I should I should keep a, a collection of all these images because there's been so many great great ones over the years. Uh, really impressive and and. To this day, I mean, it, it still freaks me out as much as it did the very first time that, that <laughs> Dave, people like you, would <laughs> see fit to, like, do that to your bodies in a permanent way. And, and uh, I'm very honored and flattered and, and uh, a little scared, <laughs> but mostly honored and flattered. Do you feel like a, a personal responsibility to not get canceled just for people like Dave? Who have your likeness? Yes, so so that that's why I can't I can't do anything super offensive on this particular podcast <laughs> because I don't want want all those people with weird out tattoos to regret their decision. <laughs> I'm glad you're thinking of the fans. It's, it's important. Yes. All right, I want to rewind a little bit, and uh, I use that as a pun because this is about Couch Potato, the song about TV shows. Ooh. So Eminem let you do the song but he didn't want you to do a video what were you thinking for the video oh uh, it would have been uh expensive uh <laughs> because we were looking to recreate most or all of the shows mentioned in, oh, in wow. the song which would have been which would have been a, a logistical nightmare and if you know now that a lot of time has passed i will tell you honestly from the pit of my heart i'm a little relieved that they said no really like this is gonna be this is gonna be hard to make and it's gonna be super expensive and i'm probably <laughs> gonna lose a lot of money doing this video wow so so it would have now here okay here's here's what i would have done uh in retrospect the most popular song from poodle hat wound up being ebay and hmm. uh at the time you know i i thought that was a good parody but it's just not timely because the backstreet boys head had come out like I don't know, 18 months, two years before. I was like, you know, I try to go for like the really topical stuff and this feels like old and dated and barely fits on the album. Nowadays, you wouldn't know that that song was dated when the album came out. It's like, oh, it's just a Backstreet Boys song and, and I love eBay and that's great. So that would have been the single to do if I was going to do a video for the album. But the, And the other problem with that was, uh, you may or may not remember, but at the time, I was also a little leery about doing uh, an eBay video because eBay's whole... Um, EBA was doing a series of commercials, a whole commercial campaign based around song parodies. Like, I forget what songs they were using. Hmm. I guess maybe like My Way, Frank Sinatra, they did, I did it on eBay. And I thought, I don't want to, I don't want this a video to come out and people think, oh, Al's doing an eBay commercial. 
you know, I, 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 okay. I, I, I didn't want, in fact, when I was writing the lyrics, I was like, I don't want this to be so pro eBay that people are thinking that like they're paying me under the table to write this song. I just want this to be funny right. and have a few digs at eBay and just doing a video for it just kind of chipped it for me. Like, oh yeah, I, 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 I don't want to do a commercial for eBay, but in retrospect, I probably should have because Meg Whitcomb, who was you know, like the CEO of eBay at the time. And I think ran for governor of California actually <laughs> at one point, uh, but but she was she loved the song, and I bet I could have twisted her arm and said, "Hey Meg, you want to maybe pay for a video?" Uh, she probably would have loved to have done that, and you know that would have been helpful for the album. But as it was, uh, the timing was just not right, and uh, and that wound up being uh, a album without a video, which. In retrospect, also was not it, it was not it was not it was not the worst thing because that was also at a point where YouTube hadn't really I don't know if even YouTube existed at that point they certainly weren't were popular and MTV wasn't playing music videos so it, it was at a point anywhere where it's like do we really want to like spend all this money for a music video so that it wound up not being like a disaster it just was unfortunate. Al, I have some news for you. I hope you're sitting down. There was a video for that album, <laughs> Bob. Oh, are you on the? <laughs> I know there's a, 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 a raging debate. Like, is Bob a video? Is Bob not a video? It is what you want it to be. It's whatever you want it to be, my friend. <laughs> I think it's a video. Okay, well, let's go with that. Well, well, works for me. I think Ethan and I are going to disagree on this one. You don't think it's a video, Dave? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get into that okay, now, I wow. don't think. But yeah. <laughs> We've revealed a different side of Dave. Well, Dave and I also famously wow. argued about if the Hamilton Polka cut that you did, <laughs> if that was an official video or if it was just a fun release of a song. Well, it, it, I, I don't think you can call it official because I did that completely illegally. I did not get clearance from Disney. <laughs> Uh, I knew that Lin Manuel would love it. I mean, I mean, I, I didn't, I wasn't afraid of Lin suing me for that. But I thought, oh, Disney might, you know, take this down. And thankfully, they did not. Uh, but I, I did that, like you know, over twenty four hours, just you know, just for fun. And I, I, Lin loved it, and it kind of blew up online. And I'm, I'm glad for that. But yeah, that was not. I couldn't call that official because, uh, yeah, that was that was done basically <laughs> hoping that Disney would not sue me for it. <laughs> <laughs> to, to roll back a little bit to the uh the no swearing thing i wanted to get your opinion on the um the drake video that you reacted to that had swearing in it oh sorry about that <laughs> well it, it, i i allow other people to swear okay. i'm not gonna tell it's other people you. they can't swear it's just you <laughs> it's just me and but you're right i mean it, it, it was a video on my channel and you know Maybe I should have bleeped that. I don't know. I just I just figured that, you know, if you're watching a Drake video, you've probably heard worse. Yeah, you can expect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I want to go back even further now to the I Love Rocky Road music video. And as we saw in Bermuda's book, Black and White and Weird All Over, there was actually an entire youth accordion band on the set. And talking to Bermuda and the director, Jorah Soroff, they couldn't remember what role they were supposed to have in the music video. Do you remember why they were there and what role they would have had in the music video? I, I heard that interview and I don't think that my memory is any better than, than John's on this. Um, I just know that they were there for the bulk of the day. It, I think the video is probably not scheduled really well because you know when, when I schedule, when I when I'm directing, I usually have people in and out and not wasting a lot of time. And, I, and those kids were there for hours and hours and hours, and it got really late at, to the point where we realized we were never going to get around to them. And I felt terrible because these kids were just like you know waiting around with these accordions and and you know it, it was. I just felt bad because, and they weren't even going to be in a video. They basically wasted their day, you know, like hanging around an airstrip in uh, Agua Dulce, California. Um, but I, I don't know. They're they're just supposed to. I think they're just supposed to be like in the background at, at a shot. Uh, maybe a. I don't know if we had bleachers for them. Or I forget exactly how it was set up, but but they were supposed to be like part of like the 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 big finish where there's going to be like a bleacher full of kids with accordions playing in the background, and that was a. Uh, a lofty idea that never became a reality. <laughs> While we were interviewing Dror Soroff, the director of, of that video, he revealed that, you know, just kind of an off the cuff thing that you did for his daughter's preschool was you starred in a, a fan made music video of 
I love Rocky Road for them. That's that. I mean, that was just incredible. What other amazing things like that have you done? Uh, we'll give you an opportunity to to toot your horn. I, I did a I did a full on. Oh, here's okay. Here's here's a 2000 inch podcast exclusive. I, I did a full on music video for my daughter's high school. Oh, and I won't tell you what high school that was. But it was for they they do these fundraising things, and you know there there are a number of celebrities that go to you know that this high school, and they do like. Uh, like a fundraising show that would blow your mind. I mean, I can't give away any secrets or tell you like who was involved or what, but super impressive. And and they <laughs> they got me to do they got me to do a full on um, music video. Uh, it was uh, it, I I didn't write it by the way, but I I, I approved it and I starred in it. And uh, it was a parody of uh, Beds Are Burning uh, by Midnight Oil. Uh, called uh distance learning about 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 learning you know going because that was the year that like you know mm -hmm. every every kid was like learning long distance through zoom so mm -hmm. uh so the reason why i did that video called the gift where i give my hair to somebody else and i've got the ball cap underneath yeah you're familiar with that of course yeah right yeah the reason we did the reason i did that was because i was in a full bald cap doing this midnight oil parody because the lead singer is bald uh <laughs> and i thought oh well during my downtime i've got this idea for a funny little skit we can do because <laughs> because wow. like one of the producers was bald so it's like oh, wait you want to do this with me we'll just we'll go over to the stairs over here and we'll just do this funny <laughs> little thing so we did that so that was actually a side product of seen by a lot of people for a video that only a couple thousand people will ever see. Wow. It, so was there a song wow. to accompany uh, Distance Learning? Yeah, yeah. So it was a, I recorded the vocals. It was a full-on parody of, of uh, the Midnight Oil song. <laughs> uh, and there's a full music video, which you'll never see. Nobody's going to see it ever. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> can we hear it? Can you, can you sing a part of it for us? Mm, maybe, maybe when we're not on the podcast. You know, you know next time I see you somewhere and i've got my laptop with me i i bet i have a copy of it which i can actually play for you but it's All it's right. gotta it gotta be under wraps because it's a lot a lot of nda stuff going on like like nothing from that show is ever supposed to see the light of day understood we'll never speak of it on the podcast again <laughs> 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 that is very cool i mean that is just the idea that you recorded a song and a video for this you know a few thousand people is just it's mind-blowing well, you, you do stuff for your daughter, you know? <laughs> mm, of course. <laughs> now, along those lines, is there anything that, whether it, it's something you did or something that you've worked on, that you feel did not get the attention that you think it should have gotten? You, you never know when you put something out into the world how people are going to react to it. Like, um, I, I thought that, that It's All About the Pentiums was just as good as White and Nerdy. It's the same kind of subject matter. In fact, when I did White and Nerdy, I thought, well, this is kind of a retread of It's All About the Pentiums. And, you know, that Pentiums had a huge big budget video and a lot of production value and Drew Carey and, you know, Emo and all this stuff. And I thought, you know, I, 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 I thought that maybe could have done a little bit better. Uh, which is which is why I was so surprised when White and Nerdy took off. But I, I think I think timing has a lot to do with it because yeah. Pandiums was what like 1999, and and White and Nerdy was seven years later. So I think maybe I talked about this in interviews. I think 2006 was maybe a tipping point where all of a sudden nerd culture became super cool. So I, I think the timing on on White and Nerdy couldn't have been better. Um, and I don't think that White Nerdy was really any better of a song than Pentiums. I think I think they're both about equal, but just because of you know the time in the zeitgeist when it came out, I I think people <laughs> reacted to it very very strongly, which I'm very happy about. I'm gonna make a a jump because you said White and Nerdy. I'm gonna talk about the New York Times article that Sam Anderson wrote uh, a few years ago, and in it we got a really interesting look at your songwriting process for a parody song uh you gave him some alternate unused lyrics for white and nerdy and i remember at the time dave and i said to sam like well did you ask al what his process was for the originals or for the the polkas and he's like i should have asked that so <laughs> on, on behalf of sam anderson um i would love to get an idea of, of how you go into the non-parodies for, for for polkas or for the for the uh 
uh, originals. I guess the originals. Well, both, if you if we have time. Well, I got all the time in the world. Well, we need to stop right there. We cannot possibly give away our entire interview with Weird Al on this episode. What will people listen to on August 29th, 2057, when episode 2000 Inch airs? Well, not to worry, Dave. As you may not be surprised to hear, the part of our interview with Al from episode 2000 Inch where we pretend it was October 2021, well, that part lasted for nearly three hours. You are absolutely right. And since it's Weird Altober, we will be airing the rest of that um, October 2021 section of episode 2000 Inch this entire month, all month long, Weird Altober. And speaking of Weird Al Tober, our Canadian Weird Al loving, cartoon enjoying, geek of a friend, Chris Sear, sent us a very special drawing for Weird Al Tober. Yeah, Chris always sends us the greatest artwork. You can check out his awesome drawing of Ethan and myself celebrating Weird Al Tober over on our Facebook group, group.2000inch.com. Thank you, Chris! Hey, Chris, did you know that this week's episode is brought to you in part by Vegan Burrito Restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double-wrapped in quesadilla burrito burrito and Weirzer Burger in Albany, New York? Well, come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito your Burrito Burrito or hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouth-watering loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world, plant-based, real food, always vegan style. Visit burritosquared.com or wizardburger.com and order ahead. Well, you know what that sound means. It's time for This Week in Weird Al-related news? No. That sound always means that we have a message on the 347 Spatula Hotline. The 347 Spatula Hotline, the official hotline of Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast, is sponsored by Angel Valenzuela and David Cash, two amazing Weird Al fans and longtime podcast supporters. All right, Frank, let's hear it. Dave, Ethan, this is Craig. You might remember me from the internet. I wanted to just tell you that uh, quite a get getting uh, Weird Al to appear on the Weird Al podcast that seemed oddly appropriate somehow, and it was thinking majestic to hear you guys ask the question that I, the question, plural, that I'm sure most of your listeners would wish to ask if they themselves were in contact with Weird Al. So, very well done. Very uh, excited to hear it, and um, it was a very fun lesson, so I appreciate it. Uh, that said, bye! <laughs> well, thank you to, I have to assume, that is the one, the only, Craig Billmeyer, a.k.a. Hot Licks Houlihan, the world champion air guitarist, calling into our podcast, Dave. Well, Craig, we hope we made you and the rest of our listeners proud with this week's episode and this week's rounds of questions. We'll have even more with Weird Al next week, and we hope we live up to your expectations. Yes, thank you so much, Craig. And, and all, right, all right, now is it time for this week in Weird Al-related news, Dave? Almost. It's time for us to talk about David Grant. Well, in that case, first let me ask you, hi, how much do dogs cost? Um, wait, wait. It depends on the dog, I guess. What dog did you have in mind? I don't know, but you might be surprised to know that a Golden Retriever is the most popular dog breed on TikTok with 9.2 billion views. I know that because I joined TikTok to follow David Grant, a.k.a. Dave Grant, a.k.a. Sebastian Shepard, a.k.a. MC Chalkskin. So, Golden Retrievers? or I, ch I changed my mind. Yorkies. Yorkies? Yorkies? We don't need no stinking Yorkies. Uh, okay. How about just a sheepdog? Oh, like Sebastian Shepherd? Is a shepherd a sheepdog? It depends on if it has chalk skin. I, I don't know. I I'm just going to go follow at SEB underscore SHEP on TikTok, even though, like I said, I already joined TikTok to follow him. And then I'm going to go visit wolfandwool.com. I'm glad I could clear that out for you. Do you have any other questions you'd like to ask me, Ethan? Yes. Um, now is it time for This Week in Weird Al Related News! Yep. Great! 
Well, we want to keep it brief this week, but we did want to follow up on something we reported on the other week. The episode of FX on Hulu's Why the Last Man, entitled Weird Al is Dead, that the bodacious UH Jeff had alerted us to a few weeks ago, finally aired on October 4th. Now, in the episode, there's one character, and he's talking about his sister, and she took him to see Radiohead, and he continues by saying, she wanted to show me that there was more to music than Weird Al. And then the other character says, rest in peace, Weird Al. Before the episode aired, Weird Al sent out a screenshot of the episode title with just the text, "Uh uh-oh. And once it aired, Weird Al sent out the clip with just the text, uh, thanks? This prompted a few people from the show to respond to him. Why the last man actress and wife of David Cross tweeted, We love you, Alfred! Why the last man actress Ashley Romans replied to Al's tweet, Don't trip, homie. It's a different Weird Al upside down face emoji. To which Who's official account replied, Phew! Along with a gif of a very relieved looking Weird Al. But the absolute best reply came from Eliza Clark, the showrunner from Why the Last Man. She said, This scene got trimmed a little in post, but there was a line I loved where Yorick says, I listened to Amish Paradise so much, I wore out the tape. And then she goes, There's only a little bit more to music than Weird Al, but let's be honest, Weird Al Yankovic is the best of us. Well, we could not agree anymore, except there really isn't anything more to music than just Weird Al. This week's episode is brought to you in part by Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota uh, beautiful, it's also a weird. Oh, do you remember last week how Weird Al himself was part of this ad? Oh, yeah. What did he say again? I am not going to read this thing about the the beaver and the Queen of England? That sounds more like a Chilliwack thing. Gotta pass. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear him say it. Dave, I wanted you to say what he said. I'm not going to read this thing about the beaver and the Queen of England. That sounds more like a Chilliwack thing. Gotta pass. So visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next expedition, Discover Darwin, more than just the twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to visit discoverdarwin.biz. Each week, we're able to bring you our podcast absolutely free thanks to our sponsors, Burrito Burrito, Discover Darwin, Jackson Scoggins, David Grant at wolfandwool.com, and Angel Valenzuela and David Cash. And also thanks to our amazing close personal friend, Patreon supporters, Blair, Frank from the Bank, Kenneth, Jared, Jake, Javier, UH Jeff, Zeb, Allison, and our newest close personal friend, Scott. And thanks to Jeff M. and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our family-friendly weekly Weird Al podcast, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash 2000 inch or by picking up some pretty stinking majestic official Dave and Ethan's 2000 inch Weird Al podcast merchandise. There's t-shirts, there's tote bags, there's pillows, there's tank tops. Oh, there's so much great stuff over at shop.2000inch.com. Don't forget to grab your copies of Black and White and Weird All Over and check out our special bonus book series where author John Bermier Schwartz walks us through the book page by page and picture by picture. And also, don't you forget it, Patreon supporters get to hear all the bonus episodes early. There's still a couple left. We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans, so please join our Facebook community and post about Weird Al by visiting group.2000inch.com. And we absolutely love it when we receive voicemail via our official 27-hour-a-day podcast hotline, 347 Spatula. You might even hear your message in a future episode. For everything about our podcast, including incredible past episodes and guests, be sure to visit WeirdAlPodcast.com or 2000inch.com. And keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And a big thank you for subscribing and leaving those awesome reviews on Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Spotify, Stitcher, or the podcast app of your choice.
Thank you once again to this week's guest joining us all the way from episode 2000 Inch, the incredible Weird Al Yankovic. Also, thank you to Chris Sear, Craig Billmeyer, a.k.a. Hot Licks Hulan, and Cat O'Carroll. And also thank you to the Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible theme song. And a big thank you to all of you, our listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for listening to Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. And always remember to gill and chill. Oh, and hey, Dave, I've been doing the McKenzie Brothers cooing, you know, quite a bit on the podcast lately, but I don't remember ever hearing you actually do it. Me actually do what? The cooing. The whining? I'm sorry, Ethan. You're just not making any sense at all. Rather than let you explain, let me remind people to tune in next week for even more with our interview with Weird Al Yankovic. And now, please enjoy our pretty stinking majestic instrumental ending theme song. That was Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. Episode 128-inch. Now trending in Canada and Israel. Well, first of all, let me say, like, I'm a big fan of your podcast. I mean, I don't want to, like, blow smoke, but it's easily one of my top five favorite Weird Al podcasts.